Hey there, Justin Christensen here from Conversion Fanatics, and today I want to talk about abandoned cart rate. Now, a survey was done of 1,200 U.S. adults on the reasons why they abandon cart or leave a site without making a purchase, and I thought I would highlight and showcase some of those and give you some ideas as to how to um, better resolve some of those issues and things that you can test to then better increase your checkout rate on your store. Number one out of the 1200 at 61% basically said that there were extra costs such as shipping, tax, and fees. So some things that you can do there are obviously highlight what the tax and fees might be. Uh, earlier on in the process you can leverage free shipping as well as you can test things like free shipping threshold and highlight some things like um, you know upgraded shipping you can you can leverage there so do offer a free option and then offer an upgraded expedited shipping option uh, to just emphasize that so the further along you have in the process of checkout before you showcase some of those items uh, the worse off you are going to be so make sure that you're highlighting your shipping, your tax and fees early on in the process as quickly as possible so there's no extra added costs. You don't want somebody getting further down into the process and then, oh, great, I gotta pay you know $20 for shipping or in the one case of one company that we were working with, they had $30 in shipping. So it was a big turnoff for a lot of, of people. So you can do you know low flat rate shipping, um, things like that to really emphasize uh, the savings and the benefit of actually going through with the purchase. Uh, number two at 35% is they were making people create an account. Now this is a big roadblock and barrier for a lot of companies that they think they need to push people to create an account. Well, the best thing that you could potentially do if you want somebody to create an account is blend it in with your actual checkout process. So um, just add a password field in there instead of having a sandwich page in between the actual cart and the checkout where they you know log in with you know Google or log in with Facebook or you know check out as a guest if you're giving them multiple different options most people don't want to create an account if you do have to have them create an account like I said put the password field into your actual checkout use their email as their username or you can actually just emphasize specifically why they need to create an account and sell them on it list some benefit bullets of why they should create an account you know, track your order, earn rewards points. There's uh, multiple different things to do there. <clears throat> Number three in at 27% is too long or too complicated of a process. And this kind of goes back to, you know, number two with creating an account, but you want to streamline that process as quickly as possible. If you can have a one page checkout, the, the better it's going to be, but don't have them click the add to cart button and then it has a pop up. Uh, to then continue to the cart and then has the cart and then they got to continue to check out and then they've got to fill out their shipping information and then they got to fill out their billing information. Just streamline that process. We say no more than three steps in there. If you have a cart pop up and then you have a cart as well, try to maybe skip that pop up and go directly to cart or skip the cart altogether and go directly to checkout if you have like a drawer or something on the site. So test some multiple elements there to streamline and remove some of those friction points in that complicated process. Uh, number four at 24% is couldn't see or calculate total cost up front. And this kind of goes back to number one. But if the visitors can't see exactly what they're going to pay, uh, this includes shipping, this includes tax, this includes any other additional fees that they might have on here. Um, they're probably going to bounce, obviously 24% of the 1200. Uh, did so so calculate you know highlight the savings that they're going to get and the absolute total that they're going to have early on in the process uh, number five is website errors and crashes obviously if your website doesn't work it doesn't load in a you know reasonable amount of time we usually say you know four to five seconds at max uh, anything sub three per three seconds is, is great uh, but make sure your website is free of errors and that user experience is not complicated and frustrating. So if you constantly have pop-ups and you constantly have distractions or 
you know, things disappearing once you click on them and just make sure your experience is the best it can possibly be. And obviously free of errors, make sure the site functions on, you know, do some cross domain or I mean cross browser or cross device checking. Uh, you can use things like browser stack, which what we do here at Conversion Fanatics to, to kind of QA every single one of our experiments. Um, so make sure obviously errors, that's pretty obvious. But uh, number six at 18% is they don't trust the site with their credit card. So the best thing you can do here is you know highlight that it's 100% secure. You can back it up with some social proof. You can use reviews to kind of build that level of trust. You can use security icons. Uh, you can use number of happy customers. Uh, anything you can do to kind of emphasize that you're secure and you're trustworthy, um, the better off you're going to be. So test icons, test anything you can do to kind of build that level of trust. Uh, number seven was delivery was too slow. So we live in the Amazon worlds where we have Amazon Prime now where we can, you know, I can order something here after I'm done recording this video and it'll show up at my office here in about two hours. So if you have a long delay and, and a lot of people, specifically in the drop shipping world, uh, have this problem where they have a very long lag time, you know, it could be 14 to 25 days before somebody actually receives their product. So emphasize fast and discreet shipping. You'll receive your order within, you know, five to seven business days, um, things like that on your product detail page and your checkout process. The more you can emphasize the delivery windows, the better off you're going to be. Um, number eight at 10% is return policy was not satisfactory. So if you have a return policy or exchange policy, highlight it, emphasize it on your product detail page, have a little mouse over, you know, pop up light box that, that highlights your return policy. It's like no hassle 30 day returns. Uh, you'll pay for return shipping. Those are all things that you could potentially test, but highlight um, specifically what your return policy is and uh, make it very beneficial to the visitors. So that removes any doubt or any fear or friction in that process of checkout. Um, number nine is at 8% is not enough checkout or not enough payment options. So uh, like recently American Express and Discover Card basically said, we're gonna match the rates of Visa and MasterCard. So when you sign up for a merchant account, typically you'll just get Visa and MasterCard. You need to sign up for Discover and American Express separately. At least the last time I had to set one up, that was the case. Um, so offer as many payment options as you can. A lot of people are testing Amazon Pay, they're testing Google Pay, um, they're testing uh, PayPal, obviously as additional options, but you wanna test which one has the most impact as well as the placement of those payment options uh, on checkouts to, as to not add friction. So be careful with that, but make sure you're offering all four credit cards, um, offer uh, you know PayPal, Google Pay, Amazon Pay as best as you possibly can and test the placement of those buttons and those options as to not add additional friction. And then finally, uh, number 10, 5% is their card was declined. So, that could be many reasons. You could have your restrictions and your verification set too strict uh, for address match and things like that on your merchant account. So be as lenient as you possibly can. Obviously, you want to combat any fraud issues on your, your card and your merchant account as to not put that at risk. But you want to pay attention to the reasons why people's cards are declined. Is it because of insufficient funds or is it because that um, you have your settings set too strict? as far as address match and, and things like that. That's not as important in the testing process. Um, obviously, it's pretty low compared to things like extra cost in shipping. But I wanted to highlight a few of these reasons why people leave based on this survey study. And uh, hopefully you find some value in it. If you did, be sure to share it so other people could benefit. Uh, like, comment, and uh, subscribe. And uh, again, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video and it helps you understand how you can improve your store to uh, increase your checkout rate. So again, Justin Christensen here and we'll talk to you again in another video. Thanks.